Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is doing well and there is still some sunlight before the winter sets in and you've all grabbed a coffee to get started with this report. In this one, I'm going to discuss the collapsing world economy. What are the global headwinds going forward and why the markets are lackluster? A little bit about the Ethereum merge. Uh, now that is successfully done. Now what? And then move on to the technical analysis. So in the overall economy, in the overall macro economy, people are confused. The markets don't have a direction. All the markets are interconnected. There are a lot of macro headwinds. And until clarity is received on that front, market and short to medium term will tend to remain lackluster the way, they, the way it is right now. So in terms of the broader macro, uh, it's not fully priced in, in my opinion, because uh, of a number of factors. I'm just going to walk through a number of factors I can think of. One is the strong dollar. And what the strong dollar does is it makes matters worse. It's good for the people living in the US because they can... Uh, you know, they can buy more for the same value, uh, for the same amount of money. So the good for the US shoppers and good for import, importing within the inside the US and selling it domestically. But it's bad for other countries and bad for other currencies because they are suffering. So it kind of creates an imbalance globally. And also the commodity prices are rising uh, also in the US, I believe, and also in other countries around the globe everywhere. And uh, talking about Europe, uh, one of the biggest economies, the biggest economies in Europe is Germany, as we all know. And its natural gas has been shut off recently. The pipeline has been cut. The energy prices are north of 100%. We haven't even seen winter yet. And uh, in my opinion, when the consumers haven't taken a hit on the energy bills. And when that becomes visible, consumer spending drops. And uh, yeah, it's going to create quite some problems. And that's what Germany is trying to take steps on right now. But I don't think it's enough. And on the other side of the globe, we have countries like Argentina, Sri Lanka and Pakistan. You would see that Argentina has just hiked the interest rates to 75% because the inflation is about 100%. It's crazy. I know. In US, it's still 10%, but it's 100% and they're high, high, hiking the rates by 75%. And they have taken a lot of loans like these countries from the international monetary funds and they have to pay them back with high interest for the coming years. So certainly their economy is going to be slowing down. And on the other side, uh, for example, China, uh, they have, as we all know, we have a real estate crisis. In China, uh, unlike many other countries, they, they like to save and 70% of their wealth is stored in real estate. And the real estate market in China has become for the last many years like a Ponzi scheme where home buyers pay upfront to buy homes. And before the project is even started, the, the developers, the real estate developers start with another project and another project because of the people's money. So people's money is stuck and Chinese government is doing something about it. Uh, we don't have too much idea, but this has been a problem this to keep an eye on. So. What I'm trying to highlight is there is a lot of things happening globally, but the good news is that the unemployment numbers, at least in the US, has been low for the time being. And what will give bolster to the markets going forward is easing inflation. And uh, that is something we have to wait and watch. And that's what the Fed is trying to do, I think, in the coming uh, next week, where the expectation is that they might hike the interest rates by another 1% to bring down the inflation which may take a hit on the stock markets, which may take a hit on the crypto markets as a whole. And also because of this, uh, I happen to look at this one. You can Google this. Uh, this is a nice article to read. World Bank says the global rate hikes could trigger a 2023 recession. And it has really some good points out here, which you can take a look. And going forward, moving on uh, the crypto markets, so the September, the month of September is going to be volatile. Having said that, let's check the Fibonacci retracement. We know that the price of Bitcoin has been trending in the range of, let's say, 17,000 to 25,000 in the last few months. I'm just going to draw the Fibonacci retracement over here from the low to the highs. 
and just to check out the support levels that we have got and you would notice that we have been in this range of 78.6 to 0.5 and we are currently struggling in this range so until and unless we break out of something like uh, the 22,000 levels uh, we going to just remain stuck and there is a possibility of a capitulation if the you know something like a black swan the stock market crashes by 30 percent a lot of things are happening so it's really hard, hard to pinpoint what will be the next trigger but bitcoin has been showing tremendous support about 19 20 thousand dollars and i find it difficult for it to break down if i go ahead this is something i drew the last time if you remember the miners health and which indicates the direction of the markets as a whole for Bitcoin it has been strengthening the RSI is low and I think it's already quite oversold so there is a possibility that certainly yes it goes to sixteen fifteen thousand dollars but even if that happens that's a great buy zone so I have not really changed my stance I think it's still a great buy zone I don't know the lows but this is a great price level to watch where the stock markets are dipping but Bitcoin is just staying its stance around twenty thousand dollars and also another interesting thing to note is like for the last one and a half years the transactions of bitcoin is about 250k that you see here the price is lackluster going from whatever seventy thousand dollars sixty seven thousand dollars to down to twenty thousand it's just operating around this but there has not been too much change in the transaction count that just shows that people are still using the currency as they supposed to be used and also on the on-chain part we are under capitulation this is something called the net unrealized profit loss which takes into account the actual price of bitcoin versus the realized price uh, which is you know which kind of tells you if the overall bitcoin hodlers are in net profit or a net loss and right now the the overall uh, bitcoin hodlers are in net loss that indicates capitulation and that's also an indication of the lows for the for for bitcoin certainly can happen we capitulate but i'm not really faced at that we are already at pretty much lows and last but not the least about the xmr uh, index price index uh, we have been trending in a range i range i just drew the fibonacci retracement a while ago and we are stuck in this range right now until and unless we break above this 180 200 dollars with good volumes we're going to be in this range and uh, it's good for traders but uh, also probably a good place to buy for the long-term hodlers i would say that another interesting thing is if i see the vertical line this is the kst index which is no sure thing index you can look it up it has just crossed which tells me that there is a sort of uptrend to come for monero in the coming days it's looking quite strong against btc as well at the moment and in terms of the volumes it's still uh, lackluster it's trying to pick up the volumes but it's still i would expect it to come back to 150 million where i can you know we can have more data points for us going forward and that is all from my side if uh, you enjoy the price report uh, that's great i hope to see you all in the next price report and uh, thank you very much bye bye